Today we are jumping into the world of tarantulas to find out how they are scientifically named. Tarantulas are a type of spider that belongs to the Theraphosidae family. There are over a thousand different species of tarantula found all over the world, each with their own unique characteristics and habitats. So how do these beautiful creatures get their scientific names? The scientific naming system for tarantulas, like all living organisms, is known as binomial nomenclature. This system was established by the Swedish naturalist Carl Linnaeus in the 18th century. Under this system, each species of tarantula is given two names. The first name is the genus, and the second name is the species. The genus name refers to a group of closely related species that share common characteristics. While the species name is unique to each individual specimen within a genus and helps to differentiate it from other species within the same genus, the genus name is always capitalized while the species name is always in lowercase. The genus name is usually a combination of either Greek or Latin words that describe the characteristics of the tarantula. For example, the genus name for the Mexican red knee tarantula is Brachypelma, which means short leg. This isn't always the case as sometimes they are named after a language, sometimes an ancient language, that comes from the location the tarantula is found. For example, chilicotl is derived from two Nahuatl words, chilo meaning black and tacatl meaning spider. The species name on the other hand is a unique identifier for each species within a genus. This name is usually descriptive of the tarantula's appearance, habitat, the place it was discovered, or sometimes they're even named after the person that discovered them or someone that person would like to honor. To give a tarantula its binomial name, the arachnologist must first carefully examine the spider and make detailed observations about its physical characteristics. These observations include the size, color, and shape of the spider's body, legs, and eyes, as well as its behavior, habitat, and geographical distribution. Most recently, scientists are beginning to map the DNA of tarantulas to more accurately determine the species and genus, which will inevitably lead to some species being reclassified in the future. Based on these observations, the arachnologists can determine the tarantula's genus and species. They will then consult existing taxonomic literature and databases to ensure that the proposed binomial name has not already been used for another species. Once the arachnologist has confirmed that the proposed name is unique, they will submit a formal description of the tarantula to a scientific journal or database. This description includes the scientific name, along with other important information about the tarantula's physical characteristics, behavior, and habitat. The scientific community will then review and verify the description to ensure that the proposed name and other information are accurate and meet the standards of scientific classification. Once the description is accepted, the tarantula will be given its official scientific binomial name, which can be used by scientists and researchers all over the world to identify and study that specific species. If you are enjoying this video and learning something new, please consider hitting that like button to help get this video recommended to other tarantula enthusiasts like yourself. Now this is not always as easy as it sounds, which is why some tarantulas don't technically have a species name yet and are classified as a subspecies. Maybe you have noticed SP or SPP before a spider species designation. This is used when an actual species name cannot be specified. This happens when a group of specimens are similar to each other, but have some distinguishing characteristics that separate them from the rest of the species. Suppose you have a species of tarantula that is found in a large geographical area with different climates and habitats. The tarantulas living in one region may have developed certain adaptations that are not present in other populations of the same species. Over time, these populations become generally distinct from each other, and we may classify them as a subspecies. However, it is important to note that not all members of a genus have a species name yet, because taxonomy Taxonomy, or the science of classification, is an ongoing process. The classification of organisms is based on their physical characteristics and genetic makeup. And as new information is gathered, scientists may need to revise the classification of a species or create a new subspecies. 
when geographically separate populations of a species exhibit recognizable phenotypic differences or a set of observable characteristics or traits. Biologists may identify these as separate subspecies or recognize local variants of a species. Typically, two different species cannot successfully crossbreed, but occasionally some closely related species might, which is why we never attempt crossbreeding in the hobby. But two subspecies may easily crossbreed. They are given subspecies names to identify they are from a certain location or have a specific color morph in an attempt to keep the bloodline separate from other already classified species. In the event, they may eventually be classified as a new species or even a morph within a specific species. The opposite is also possible. For example, the Avicularia avicularia. For a time, this species was broken up into multiple different species names. But upon further study, a lot of those species have all been combined into one species, Avicularia avicularia, but separated as different morph types. Additionally, some tarantulas may be rare, and there may not be enough data available to classify them into distinct species or subspecies. In other cases, there may be a lack of taxonomic expertise or resources to conduct research and properly classify the tarantula. So the process of giving a tarantula its scientific binomial name involves careful research, observation, and documentation. By following this standardized system of binomial nomenclature, arachnologists can ensure that each tarantula species is uniquely identified and accurately classified, making it easier for researchers all around the world to study and understand these tarantulas. We must be patient and willing to adapt as new information emerges and the classification of tarantulas change. Despite the rumors and conjecture on the internet, tarantulas are not renamed just because a scientist wants to use their own name or get credit for studying the species. Reclassification is an arduous and peer-reviewed process solely undertaken to describe a species as accurately and concisely as possible. And while some people are honored by having a species named after them, reclassification is never arbitrarily undertaken just to give a spider a new name or to placate someone's ego. But you can certainly placate my ego and help support this channel so I can continue to make educational tarantula videos by checking out my spring merch drop available on my website right now. These new styles ship worldwide and are available in a wide variety of colors, sizes, and designs, a lot like the tarantulas that we've discussed today. And for a limited time, you can use the code SPRINGDROP10 to save 10% off your entire purchase. As always, I appreciate you watching. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks for buying Tarantula Collective merchandise, and I will see you next Tuesday. <laughs>